ever since uh, DEI, the woke agenda and all those stupid stuff that uh, we continue to see in entertainment have made their way into the gaming industry, to the movie industry and so on, there have been a growing number of people who have criticized more and more vocally and we've seen it. Those are uh, our favorite YouTube channels, uh, people on Twitter, people on uh, several media websites like that park place and uh, like Smash JT's uh, website. And, and those people have been growing and growing in popularity, in uh, subscribers, in viewerships, in all in all the power that they their voices possess. However, gaming companies and entertainment companies have usually taken uh, the what I would like to call the ostrich approach and just buried their heads and didn't listen to any of the criticism apart from a small number of them throughout the years. And this is due because at the very end, what the entertainment companies think that is happening is that youtubers and people who watch those channels are not actually the people that they should be catering to because they're just online people who don't really have any power and would never amass a following large enough to turn the tides and reduce the viewership this was all disproven in the last few years uh, as we saw with the rings of power with other shows with uh, several games like Dustborn and concord that Actually, people on YouTube and people who watch YouTubers are the exact audience that you need to cater to in order to have success and have money flowing into your pocket. And those are the people who are the gamers, who are the viewers, who are the fans and who are the exact target audience that has always been there and now just uses YouTube as a platform to voice their opinions. Criticism of something is has always existed however with the online platforms you have the opportunity to be much more direct and much more connected to the people who have the knowledge and uh, have the receipts and can show you exactly what someone is doing uh, throughout their sources or throughout information that they have received we have seen this with nerdrotic who had a lot of information about the rings of power even before it released and we have seen a lot of other youtubers and more famously uh, through the throughout the past few days and weeks and Dimion who basically called out CD Projekt Red, Ubisoft and uh, all sorts of other companies about their practices about what's happening inside of those companies citing anonymous sources that a lot of people have uh, tried to say that they don't exist and he's making all of this up which in, in truth might be there is a possibility however he, what, what his videos are uh, too concise and too well placed in order for this to all be a lie and we have reached a time when a company or someone who represents the company cannot hide from those criticisms anymore you cannot just be a company and losing money for so long that you don't respond to the online criticism that is happening from the people who you're supposed to cater to and you're supposed to take the money from them. I'm of course talking about companies that have embraced the DEI uh, culture and have embraced just destroying everything that we grew up loving and grew up playing, watching, reading about. I've seen snippets from the new Tomb Raider uh, animated show where Lara Croft is a lesbian and the whole show revolves around that and her uh, sidekick slash friend is also turned into a gay dude and just this is entirely the focus of the show which who would want to watch that like the people who grew up with Lara Croft people like me we know her as the the very forward gifted adventurous ass kicking lady who is not only one of the attractiveness symbols of the end of the 20 and the beginning of the 21st century in gaming but also is good on her own she's epic on her own she has a good backstory she has amazing adventures and to change her just like that just for the sake of put her on the list that she's now gay or she's now lesbian or she's now trans or whatever and add her to the list of characters that you destroyed for the sake of basically no one is absolutely baffling to me you see the the companies embrace these ideas because they're tone deaf 
to what people actually want nobody from those studios uh takes the time to watch youtube videos and watch the lowly youtubers and people who talk about what they like and what they don't like because they think yeah they're just lonely people in their rooms and they have they're talking to nobody or to like a thousand people and they're not a voice that we should be listening let us listen to the official consultants that we pay huge money to and they'll tell us what is the the best for us well they did and what happened Dustborn happened concord happened the new lara croft happened rings of power happened all of those are absolute garbage and losing money like crazy and our city project Rect is the same i'm just gonna show you this article from that park place which basically encompasses what ha has happened between the ceo of city project Rect, michael nowakowski who responded to endymion about the DEI and ESG practices that Endymion revealed in his videos and says that the company hires based on merit despite the company's website claiming it embraces equitable practices and having scholarship program that excludes men. We see here the tweet since we live in the times where anyone can record complete nonsense and make a story out of it. CDPR talent leaving? We have the lowest rotation of people in recent years. This was also disproven by Endymion, by the way. DEI driven recruitment. We hire based on merit and talent alone, just as we make gain driven by artistic vision alone and there have been a lot of articles covering that especially the new program up, uh, from CD Projekt Red that basically does not include men in it they want to empower girls and want to empower uh, only women or trans people or whoever but white men no we don't want them we want to uh, empower girls to be developers to be game artists and everything and I say okay it's okay that part is okay interest them have more people that are in general interest in gaming development however there is a second part of that that you want to replace seasoned people that have a lot of ideas and a lot of experience in making games and just hire based on diversity I've, i'm sure that you have seen articles like we strive for our company to be at least 50 percent female to have equality yeah that's all good to present that you're up for equality but are those 50 percent of the same caliber as the people you're going to fire to replace them with because if i am let's say someone who has had 10 years of experience and i've had my name put on a lot of successful games but i'm a white male and you replace me with someone who has zero to no experience or you replace let's say my team who have been with me for at least five six years and you re replace people uh, with let's say girls that do fit the quota for the equality and uh, 50 percent gender equality in the company what am i supposed to do with them if they don't have the talent for it what am i supposed to have what what kind of a game am i supposed to present to the world maybe star wars outlaws or Dustborn. And the article says a lot uh, about the exchange between Endymion and the CEO of CD Projekt Red. And I do urge you to go to Endymion's uh, Twitter page and see his uh, YouTube videos as well to see what's happening and exactly what, what he did to absolutely destroy every claim that the CEO of CD Projekt Red made against him. And this is from the website. I actually have it here. This is open. It, it opened quite hard. I don't know why. This is exactly what this is on the website in real life. And this is the message from uh, the other CEO, Adam Kiczynski. I hope I'm saying the name right. Uh, we are achieving it by encouraging diverse teams, inclusive leaders, equitable processes, DEI, and so on and so on. Diversity in games. And in this section, I just want to say this. We consider it important to reflect the diversity of our world in large and small ways, both its bright and dark sides. This is exactly what I've talked about in uh, previous videos. We don't need games, shows to generally reflect our world. You might include some stuff in certain genres. Yes, of course. However, we don't want 
those things in there we want to have a good time we don't want to live in the real world when we're trying to escape the real world by playing and this is not just my criticism i'm a small channel i'm just posting my opinions i don't have the sources that uh, other youtubers have i'm just reporting on what i read and giving you my opinion and my opinion is basically that of a normal person who enjoys playing video games, who enjoys watching good TV shows and good movies, who enjoys even listening to a, a good music and playing good music. And my criticism is the same as every other person who enjoys that. We want quality. We want to feel connected to the characters. But feeling collect connected to the character doesn't mean that they have to look like us. We just want someone with the values that we can follow. The heroic values, the even the villainous values, even the the cold the stone cold logic and three-dimensional character that we enjoy seeing. We don't want someone who is so morally gray that you don't know how to feel about them. We want to see characters that would present us with values that we strive to achieve in real life. We want to see what we now consider classic old shows like Beast Wars, like Transformers, like Stargate, Star Trek, the, the original Star Wars. We want to see that and we want to see it continue. That's what we as fans enjoy watching. And when companies don't listen to fans they inevitably crash and crumble that's what's happening to ubisoft currently that is what is going to happen to amazon's rings of power and we'll see that every company that's currently following this path of not listening to their fan base to the people that they depend on the normal person that just wants to enjoy themselves that's what's going to lead to their eventual downfall and it's going to leave them struggling more and more until either they turn around and face the music and just come clean accept the loss and try to make things better or simply crash and burn and ceases to exist and when that happens there'll be new companies that won't would have, would have learned from uh, the demise of such big giants and they'll be small at first and they'll rise and rise and rise and we'll replace them at the top just like uh, game science is on their way to become the the next big giant with black myth wukong being the most successful game of this year and when that happens we'll be there to criticize to enjoy to see which company is actually looking out for uh, their audience and which company is trying to just push a broken narrative that nobody actually enjoys. And in this day and age, uh, people like me and people like the other YouTubers will just be more and more vocal and eventually we will be the go-to group of people that companies would contact exclusively because youtubers are the ones who represent the voice of the normal people and that's very much evident from subscriber numbers from the community that they uphold and from the people who follow them exactly because of what they do anyways that's all i have for today thank you for watching this video it's again uh, one of those more honest videos on which i just share my thoughts because i have seen something and i wanted to give you my opinion on how i feel about the the situation as a whole tell me what you think down in the comments below please consider uh pressing the subscribe button pressing that join button if you want to support me more directly follow me on all of my socials that are linked in the description below and also if you want to you can support me on patreon where i raise money for homeless animals and animals in shelter thank you this i have been helzo this has been disgusting and i'll see you guys in the next video cheers and stay fresh